hey y'all, it's me, Kevy. So y'all know I love Agatha Christie, but there's another author who I love who is considered the American Agatha Christie, but nobody seems to have heard of her. Her name is Mary Roberts Reinhardt, and today I'm going to share my thoughts on some of her books. Before we get into it, I just want to give you a little background about her. Mary Roberts Reinhardt was born in 1876 and published her first novel, The Circular Staircase, in 1908. Over the course of her career, she wrote over 40 novels, as well as numerous short stories, plays, and essays. Mystery was her primary genre, but she also did a lot of comedy and romance and nonfiction. Reinhardt is considered to be the source of the phrase, the butler did it, and she invented the had I but known style of mystery writing. Also, her novel, The Circular Staircase, was adapted into a play called The Bat, and the titular Bat character was the inspiration for Batman. So yeah, Mary Roberts Reinhardt's legacy is huge. But then why don't people know about her? Here's a few of my theories. Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's legacy is built upon his famous detective, Sherlock Holmes. Agatha Christie's best known for her sleuths, Hercule Poirot and Miss Jane Marple. It seems like having a recurring character for your audience to connect with and grow attached to really helped them stay culturally relevant as long as they have. Mary Roberts Reinhardt had no such character. The majority of her works are standalone stories. There's a couple of recurring characters like Letitia Carberry and Nurse Hilda Adams or Miss Pinkerton, but they've only got five books apiece. So unlike better known mystery writers, where once you've finished one book, you can go read about the same character in a dozen others, most of the sleuths you meet in Mary Roberts Reinhardt's books aren't recurring. Another thing that may have been detrimental to Reinhardt's memory is the lack of film adaptations. There are frequent adaptations of Agatha Christie and Sherlock Holmes. If you're someone who doesn't like to watch classic films, there are still contemporary movies made of these characters to introduce you to the author's work. Mary Roberts Reinhardt has not had a film adaptation since 1959. It was a great one though. It's called The Bat, starring Agnes Moorhead and Vincent Price. Take a look. What would you do for half a million? Anything short of murder. Why not murder? Nicky! And that, I suppose, is the cat dropping its dentures. Got a brain? Oh, you'd be surprised. The bat. Yes, the bat. Miss Cornelia. Yes, Lizzie. I'm here. Doesn't that look so good? Oh, I love it. So while she has had a lot of film adaptations, they were all done during the silent or black and white eras, and a lot of them are lost. Perhaps a modern film could reignite interest in her, but on the other side of that coin, what production company is gonna make one of those films if there's apparently no interest in her? One last point I wanna make, and I'm not sure how much water it holds, is that despite writing during the golden age of mysteries, she was an American author and not a British one. It appears to me that most authors discussed from this era were British, and most conversations on the subject are very British-centric. This would get Reinhardt excluded from a lot of these discussions because she wrote in the wrong region. With all that said, it's time to jump into the book reviews. Now, as usual, I will be remaining mostly spoiler-free, but when I do want to mention some spoilers, I will give you ample warning and provide you with a timestamp so you know where to jump ahead to. The Circular Staircase is easily her best known work and also one of her earliest as well. It's about a spinster who moves into a rented estate with her adult niece and nephew. And at night they experience mysterious hauntings that culminate with a dead man at the bottom of their circular staircase. This is just the beginning 
of the horrific things this family goes through, exacerbated by the secrets that they keep from each other. This book is so full of that delicious had I but known narrative where the narrator is writing all of this after it has happened and is lamenting in hindsight where things went wrong and if only she'd figured things out sooner. This kind of writing isn't everyone's cup of tea, but I love it. I like that the style shows you not just how the character feels in the moment, but also how she feels after the fact, once it's all over, often full of sorrow and regret. I feel like it adds deeper layers to the character development. For the most part, I liked our narrator, Rachel. She was really funny, especially in the banter with her maid. She was also rather intelligent and was easily able to engage the detective to solve the series of crimes. The case of Jenny Bryce is about a small apartment building where the first floor becomes completely submerged in an annual flood. During the flood, one of their tenants, Jenny Bryce, disappears. The landlord then tries to figure out what happened to her. Then when the flood goes down, no bodies discovered, and she begins to question whether anything had happened at all. I really like this story. It had an interesting premise, great atmosphere, and a lot of curious clues. This one also had less of a focus on who did it and more on how did they do it. I really enjoyed seeing how this book came together. My favorite part of this book is Reinhardt's description of the flood and how it affects their setting. Mary Roberts Reinhardt wrote countless short stories, but my favorite one is The Confession. Agnes rents an elderly woman's estate for the summer, but then every night gets mysterious phone calls. The mystery here begins trying to figure out who is this prank caller that keeps harassing her night after night. But don't worry, there is murder in this story. <laughs> If you're accustomed to reading mysteries, you may figure this one out fairly easily, but it's still a pleasurable read. The Yellow Room is about the Spencer family. Carol Spencer is preparing their summer home for her brother who just came home on leave when she finds a burnt corpse in their linen closet. Even though they've just arrived, everyone in the family is a suspect. This was a great, great read. I had suspicions about who I thought it was, and while I was partly right, Reinhardt still managed to surprise me. There were so many questions that needed to be answered. Who was the dead woman? Where did she die? Where did her clothes go? And why had she been staying at the Spencer estate in their yellow room? The solution is a little bit convoluted, but it gets the job done in a satisfying manner. By the way, do you like this lip gloss? Oh, it is so pretty. This lip gloss is called Profanity by Profanity Cosmetics. I've just been added to their PR team, which means if you use my discount code KEVY10 at checkout, you will get 10% off of your order. Yay! The door was a different reading experience for me because I went into it knowing who done it. My engagement with this read then was instead focused on trying to figure out the why and the how. The door is about Elizabeth Bell, who lives alone, apart from her niece Judy, who's visiting, and of course, her staff. One night, her family nurse goes for a walk and never returns. This kicks off a tumultuous series of events that leaves several dead. I enjoyed reading this one. It did take a while to get through, but I really liked the characters and their relationships. Even though I knew who'd done it, I couldn't figure out how it all went together until the very end. Spoilers in five, four, three, two, one. This is the book where the butler did it came from. The quote isn't directly in the book, but it is from here that that phrase originates. The titular door doesn't show up until the very end of the book. When they return to the hotel where the deceased Howard Summers wrote his second will, the lawyer notices that the bedroom door appears to have moved. From that, they're able to conclude that the second will wasn't written in Howard's room, but his son Walter's, and that this second will was fraudulent. The way they handled this reveal is curious to me. The detective spent two chapters explaining who did it and how, but didn't use the person's name. Instead, he gave a fake name for the person. Allegedly, this was so that it would be easier for Liz Bell to hear and understand. Then on the very last page, the detective makes an allusion to who it is. Liz Bell makes that connection 
and faints. The end. I was hoping for a little more time spent on the resolution. It would have been nice to have a few pages talking about what happened to everyone once everything was wrapped up. Thanks to the had I but known writing style peppered throughout, we do know that the house is much emptier now without Judy and the butler and a lot of the staff, and she's quite sad and lonely. But an additional dollop at the end would have been nice. I think that knowing the ending or not, this book is still an enjoyable read. The Great Mistake is not only my favorite book from Mary Roberts Reinhardt, but it is my favorite mystery novel, period. Reinhardt does an impeccable job establishing the setting and takes her time introducing us to these characters and getting us really invested before all the murders start. The Great Mistake is told from the perspective of Pat Abbott, who is the secretary to Maude Wainwright, who lives at the Cloisters. She lives there with her son, Tony. Maude was the queen of high society in her town until disaster struck on her estate, and Pat has to figure out who is behind it in order to save this family she's grown so attached to. One of my favorite things about this book is that there's this question always looming over it. What was the great mistake? Until you have the answer to that question, it's impossible to put together the solution to this mystery. I did manage to figure out who did it, but the ending was still full of surprises when they finally revealed the great mistake and how all the pieces suddenly came together. This is by far my favorite novel I've ever read. And the only downside is that virtually nobody else has read it. I love this book so much, but I have nobody to discuss it with. So I implore you, if you only read one book from this video, please make it be The Great Mistake. So here is my ranking of the Mary Roberts Reinhardt books discussed in this video. If you're looking to start reading her for yourself but aren't sure where to begin, I've got a few suggestions. My first would be The Confession. As a short story, it's less of a commitment, and it gives you a good feel for her writing style and character development. You could also start with her best known work, The Circular Staircase. Or you could go with my preference, my personal favorite, The Great Mistake. Let me know if you've heard of Mary Roberts Reinhardt or if you're interested in checking out any of her books. Since much of her work is over a century old, a lot of it can be downloaded for free on Amazon or wherever you get your ebooks from. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if it pleases and sparkles, I'll see you in the next video. Mwah! <laughs>